everyone and welcome to your next lesson in classification of skill. So I'm aware that you will have had one lesson already which Mr Wood and Mr Rashi have talked to you about the environmental continuum and how we classify skill as open or how we classify it as closed and that those two uh, types of skill, whether it be open or closed, are exact opposites. Okay. Now when we're talking about the environmental continuum, just to give you a little bit of a recap, we need to make sure that we are aware that it's not just the environment in terms of weather, all right? It's the plain environment that we may find ourselves in. So just that little recap will help you uh, moving forward as we do some recall in this assignment as well. So classifying skill, the next type of skill that we need to classify is something on the difficulty continu continuum. Now the word difficulty basically means how hard something is, doesn't it? So is it easy or is it more difficult to perform? And the way in which we classify that is we'd have a simple skill at one end and a complex skill at the other. Now you're probably thinking, well, what does miss mean by a simple skill and a complex skill? Essentially, in basic terms, and we'll go into this in a bit more detail, a simple skill is something that's easy to perform. A complex skill is something that's more difficult to perform. But it's really important here that I reiterate that that depends upon your level of skill as a performer. So something that I might find easy in relation to golf, Mr Buckley couldn't do, because he's not a golfer, and I am. But if Mr Buckley asked me, asked me to do something in rugby, he'd find it simple, but I'd find it more complex. So it depends upon your skill set. But if we were to put this simply, a simple skill is going to be a skill that is easy to perform, doesn't require much thought, doesn't have many subroutines, and has leads limited feedback. Okay. So something like running is going to be a simple skill. So Sir, could we just place running at the very end of that continuum for me? Okay, so we've got our difficulty continuum here. And on the simple, we put running. Now just to consolidate that, we know running is a simple skill because it's easy to do. It doesn't require much thought to be able to run. Um, it doesn't require much feedback. My body doesn't need much feedback knowing that I'm running correctly. So, low feedback. And another one, that word again, subroutines. So it's minimal or low amount of subroutines needed. Okay. Brilliant, okay. So there's how we classify a simple skill. And the word subroutines, just for those who are unaware, it's how a skill can be broken down. So the skill of running, it can't really be broken down. All right, we put one foot in front of the other and we keep ourselves moving. A complex skill, on the other hand, is something that's much more difficult to perform and it's near enough the exact opposite. So if we've got few subroutines for a simple skill, a complex skill is gonna have more. It's gonna have plenty of subroutines. If we don't need much feedback for a simple skill, well, a complex skill is going to need more feedback. If a simple skill doesn't require much thought, well, a complex skill is going to require a lot of thought. Okay? So whenever you're looking at these continua, I always think if you can do what one end is and know how to classify one end, you should be able to do the other because they're exact opposites. Now, the example that we're going to look at for a complex skill will be somebody performing a trampoline routine. Now, yes, there are elements in the trampoline routine, okay, that are simple. So something like a tuck jump or a tuck is a simple skill. Most people, once they're on the trampoline, would be able to perform that, okay? Something more complex would be a barani, for example. And lots of you are thinking, I don't even know what a barani is. Well, that's because it's a complex skill, okay? So, Mr Buckley, could we have a trampoline and routine at the end of the complex. Okay, so trampoline routine goes at the other end of the difficulty continuum. Now, routine involves a number of skills, and like Miss said, some of them can be tuck, which are a bit simpler, and then they've got really complex skills, such as a burani. So, these types of skills and routines need more thought, they need more feedback to know that you're doing them correctly. So, more feedback. that are hard to do and require more subroutines. So the skills are broken down into more steps. 
So more or high amount of subroutines. So just to illustrate this a little bit further, we're going to watch a little video from um, the Olympic Games of a young man uh, representing China performing a trampoline routine. Now as he's performing, um, we're just going to talk through this. So straight bounces here, that's a simple move, okay, that's a simple skill. Again, if we've got on a trampoline, I'd be able to do that, sir could do it, miss could do it, right? Young people will be able to do a simple skill like a straight bounce, pretty easily, maybe with some aids, okay? But now, as he's gone into several somersaults, forwards and backwards, okay, there's some pikes in there, there's some straights in there, there's some biranis in there, that's more complex. He wouldn't just be able to get on the trampoline and perform those, they take a... So you've joined us outside now, everyone, and Mr Buckley is gonna perform a tennis serve. And what we want you to think about is where you place that on the continuum, right at the simple end, right at the complex end, or somewhere in between. So we're outside again, and this time we're gonna do a rugby pass. And same thing, we want you to think about where would you place this skill on that continuum? Simple, complex, somewhere in the middle. Continuum, and we asked you as we were outside there to think about those two skills the tennis serve and the rugby pass, and where you would place them on the continuum. So, Mr. Buckley is now going to talk us through where they'd be placed and potentially the reasons why. Okay, so now we're looking back on our difficulty continuum. <clears throat> I would place a rugby pass here, and the reason is because it's now starting to become a little bit more difficult to perform, so it's not as complex as a trampoline routine, but it is more difficult than just running. Um, now there's going to be more subroutines um, because you've got to think about holding the ball and you've got to be thinking about passing. Okay, so there's more subroutines in here. And also there's more feedback which is required to perform the pass. So it's kinesthetic feedback to our hands and to the ball to make sure we're passing the ball correctly um, to our teammate. Okay, the next skill was the tennis serve. Now, I place this more towards the complex end of the difficulty continuum. And the reason is because there's more subroutines now. So you're thinking about where your opposition is standing. Um, you're thinking about throwing the ball in the air, the movement in your hand to hit the ball. So there's more subroutines and more skills to, to place that serve effectively. Also, you've got to think about more thought processes where the opponent is going to be standing. So there's a lot more going on uh, with that skill. So that will be over towards the complex end of the skill uh, continuum. However, it won't be all the way to the end. It's not as complex as a trampoline routine with varieties and flips and backflips, but it'll be more towards uh, the, the complex end. Brilliant. Okay, thanks, sir. So, final things for you to think about. Please don't think that all skills have to be a fully simple skill or a fully complex skill. They don't. And hopefully, through the examples that we've given you this morning, you'll be able to realise that, you know, skills are placed on a continuum, and that is the point of a continuum, to place a skill in accordance with its characteristics and the things that make it up. Hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Don't forget to do your quiz. Send your assignment back to your teacher. And we look forward to seeing you in our next lesson, all to do with skill.